Growth design is the combination of growth as a practice and design. So you bring your design skills into that idea of focusing on a company's growth. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to Nodes of Design. To help support our mission spread knowledge, we have a very special guest on today's episode. Let's welcome Lex Roman, a digital product designer who believes in measuring the impact of design. Currently, she works independently under her own company, Lex Roman Inc. And before starting her own company, she was a designer focused on growth initiative at the Black X and previously was a lead product designer at Burner. And also she worked at Envision Designing Collaborative Design Tools. She also worked with other noticeable clients like Toyota, Nissan, Deloitte, Prosper and Joy. Along with these, in her spare time, Lex contributes to a lot of social initiatives where she works on homelessness and civil education. In this episode, Lex has shared great insights on growth design where we discuss on what exactly is growth design and how to utilize the power of growth design. We then discuss on how to form teams based on growth designers and what are the various values that they bring on to the table. Later that, we spoke on how is growth design different from growth hacking and we discussed on various growth toolkits that are available out there in market. Hope you guys enjoy this episode and on every Friday, we release new episodes with different creative leaders from around the world to help you better understand different concepts related to design. So don't forget to tune in into Notes of Design every Friday. With that being said, happy designing everyone. Hi Lex, welcome to Notes of Design. It's a pleasure hosting you today on our show. Thank you for having me. So how is your day going, Lex? It's going pretty well. It's almost over. It's nighttime where I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So <laughs> Lex, if you could share your journey into design, like how did you start and what are the tips that you want to give to the beginners? I actually started my design career in film and television production. So I used to work mainly on television shows in the art department. So doing set design, working with set designers. Um, I did that for five years at the beginning of my career. And then I decided I wanted to go to architecture school. So I left the world of film and TV. I went to architecture school very briefly for like two months. <laughs> I quit architecture school almost right away um, because at the time on the side while I was in school, I was working for my friend Arturo's digital agency um, here in LA. And I actually really liked doing that. I was doing that as like a side job just to, just to help support me through school, but I, I loved it. And, and Arturo said, <laughs> you know, Lex, you could think about getting into UX design. You don't necessarily have to approach design through architecture. And, you know, the way I remember it, we had a conversation one night and the next day I went into school, I quit architecture school. I signed up for a UX class, uh, like a night class, and I never looked back. And so I've been doing UX, you know, and some version of digital design for the last eight years now. Oh, the tips for beginners. I think when, when I first started in UX... I was really lucky. So, so Arturo had pointed me towards a specific class at UCLA Extension, which was taught by Jamie Levy, um, who is also a designer in LA. And Jamie taught th UX through the lens of business. And so I think one of the biggest things missing from design education and one of the biggest gaps to fill as a beginner in design is understanding business, is understanding how design, no matter what kind of design you're doing, how it plays into business. Even in architecture, even in set design, is a business component. It drives business. It drives impact. And so understanding that is key to getting paid more, to having a more meaningful career, and to ultimately having more impact with your work. Thank you so much, Lex, for taking us through your journey. So let's begin our topic into the growth design. So what exactly is growth design and how to utilize it? Growth design is the combination of the growth skill set and the design skill set. So growth as a practice came about about a decade ago popularized by someone named Sean Ellis and then several other leaders like Andrew Chen, Brian Balfour, folks from Facebook's growth team. And the idea is that growth, the growth of a business, the growth of an organization needs to be an intentional practice. It needs to be focused on. It can't just, it won't just come about because everyone's doing a good job. You need folks on the team to be absolutely 
thinking about how is the business going to scale? How is it going to grow? And putting a lot of energy there. It's difficult to, to achieve. So you can't just, you know, hope it all works out and, uh, and not focus on it. So growth, that's growth as a practice design. The desi- growth design is the combination of growth as a practice and design. So you bring your design skills into that idea of focusing on a company's growth. So you're focusing on a company's growth by leveraging your design skill set. So, I mean, the, the way that growth design plays into an organization is that at a certain scale of company, when you're past startup stage, but you're still, you still have a huge room for growth and you're hitting roadblocks, you're hitting like barriers with getting people to sign up for a service, getting people to buy something, getting people to tell their friends about it. You're, you're in a growth stage. And so you need to put resources towards your growth so you, w- you want to put a cross-functional set of resources towards that. You would want to put product managers and engineers and data practitioners, marketers and designers on that. So what we see in organizations is that founders, CEOs, product leaders are aware of that and are hiring designers into those roles now. So that's a relatively new thing. Like the last year or two, it's really new. Um, and as a designer... You can look for those opportunities where your company is trying to grow and you can learn more about what the growth skill set means and apply that in your work when it's relevant, when you're, when you're working on a project that's around the growth of your company. Thank you so much, Lex. So how do form teams based on growth designers and what value they bring in? It's, it's a bit of an unsolved thing how growth in general fits into organizations. It's, it's different depending on the company that you're looking at. So if you're looking at a company that's sort of just out of its startup phase, they might have one growth team or they might have growth practitioners that are sort of within teams, um, generalists that are that are practicing growth. Larger companies like Netflix and Pinterest and Airbnb companies like that have multiple growth teams. And so designers, you know, would plug into a growth team in the same way they plug into a product team. You have a cross-functional team of product engineering, design, data, marketing, whatever your cross-functional team setup is, and growth designers plug into those teams. You wouldn't normally have a growth designer working on their own without cross-functional partners. Thank you so much, Lex. So how is growth design different from growth hacking? Growth hacking is the original idea that Sean Ellis put forward about the intentional focus of growth. So when Sean Ellis wrote this blog post, which was called something like, you need a growth hacker for your startup. He wrote a blog post in 2010. That was the initial growth hacking idea. And people took that blog post to mean that they needed to hire a single person who was like this renegade engineer slash marketer who was going to like code up some scalability and blast their startup into the (laughs) atmosphere. Um, It turns out that what Sean really meant was that you needed to focus resources on the growth of your company. He he has now written a book called Hacking Growth with Morgan Brown, which explains that, that it's a cross-functional practice. It's not just a solo um, ninja, as they like to say. So growth hacking and growth as a practice is the idea that you focus resources on the growth of your company. Growth design is the, the idea that you do that with a design lens. Thank you, Lex. So once a growth team has been implemented... Is there any way that we could track the growth? Yes. So, and that is one of the key skills to develop as a growth practitioner. And that's partially why I say that it's an advanced practice because it's, it's a lot to learn. So growth practitioners of any kind, whether you're a data practitioner, a marketer, a designer, an engineer, as a whole in your team... You need to be tracking and measuring success at a detailed level. You need a really detailed understanding of that. So what you'll do as someone who practices growth from any lens, including design, is set goals for your team. What do you want to achieve? How does that play into your company's success? You always want that to roll up to your company's success. You'll set those goals. You'll set measurable goals, meaning that you can measure the outcome. Something like we want our customers to have a great experience. That's not that easy to measure. And so if you're going to state something like that, you, you really need to unpack, well, what is that? What does a great experience mean? How would we measure that? So you make sure that you, you have measurable goals and then you take those metrics for the measurable goals. Let's say your goal is you're working at Uber 
and your goal is to get more people taking rides. So that's your key metric, more customers taking rides. You're going to want to break that down. You're going to want to understand all of the factors that lead up to that. And you, you want measurement in place for all of those things. And that is that is quite a task. It's not, it's much easier said than done, um, especially if you're working on a product or service that it, that goes offline like Uber does. You work with your team, you think about those different touch points of the experience, you think about how that impacts the business. In the case of Uber, it's not just the customers that's involved, it's the drivers that's involved. You know, it's the city, there's other, there's other players in the space. So you want sort of an ecosystem of metrics um, and you work together with your team, particularly, you know, if you're a designer, you're working with product data and engineering to define what those things are and to make sure that they get tracked in your tools. And the thing that I would encourage designers to do is to pay attention to that process, to be involved in it and to make sure that they understand how they can look at that information throughout the course of the year so that they're not just sending their designs off into space, that they can see how they're doing. Thank you so much, Lex. So you had mentioned tools here. So is there any toolkit that you suggest? Tool, everybody loves tool. Designers love tools. This is like Design Happy Land is, is a toolkit. Um, I personally like self-serve analytics tools. So for folks who are new to analytics, I sort of think about analytics in two buckets. The first is business intelligence tools, which are reading out the underlying database of data, to put it simply, and then self-serve analytics tools, which are which are really designed for non-technical users to explore and get their hands on data. So business intelligence tools and self-serve analytics tools. Um, business intelligence tools, examples of that would be Looker, um, Tableau, Mode. And then on the self-serve side, you have Google Analytics, Mixpanel, and Amplitude. I like, I like Amplitude. I think that it is the best self-serve analytics tool out there. Um, I also like Segment, which is, which is sort of a tool um, that makes sure that your data is high quality and is usable across all of your tools. Um, and then I don't have a favorite A-B testing tool. That would be another thing in your toolkit as a growth person. Uh, A-B testing tools are fraught with peril. So I, you know, I end up just using what the company's already been using, occasionally building our own. I really liked Aptimize when I was working on mobile, but they, I think, got acquired and I'm not sure what's up with them now. So there's a big opportunity there if anyone needs a startup idea. Better A-B testing tools. Thank you so much, Lex. So on a concluding note, recommend us three favorite books and also three people who inspire you the most in this ecosystem? I think that what's really important about design is, is understanding that our assumptions are just incorrect of everyone else and how everyone lives their lives. So I really liked the book. There's a book called Being Wrong. The, the edition that I have is a red cover with a, with a teapot that like doesn't have a correct handle on it um, that you can't pick up. So Being Wrong is one. That's a good lesson to learn. I also... Ash Moria wrote a book called Running Lean a few years back that has been one of the most instrumental books for me, shaping my practice around customer development. And then Jamie Levy's book, UX Strategy, I think is also uh, just like a really great summary of, of how to approach UX. And then in terms of people that inspire me, um, there's a growth design leader named Chaitana Deora who helps manage the growth designers Slack community um, and does a lot of public speaking. She works at a leadership level in growth. And so she, she's really inspiring. She always talks about keeping growth good. I think she's inspiring both because she's able to speak to her fellow business leaders about that, but also she takes that to heart when she manages people. Um, similarly, Molly Norris Walker is another growth design leader I really look up to. Um, I think she has a very nuanced, informed view of leadership like Chaitana does. And then Jamie Levy. She was my first my first UX teacher and I've been learning from her my entire career. Um, and so she continues to inspire me with her books and with her talks. Thank you so much, Lex, for your wonderful time and explaining us this concept of growth design so easily. We are looking forward to host you again soon. Thank you, Taj. If people are interested in learning more, they can check out growthdesigners.co. <laughs> Oh, you know, man, you know, man, you know, man.